I work on a lot of mint condition Sony Trinitron sets on this channel and here's something you haven't seen this is an abused left for dead weak CRT KV1722 and this thing is just in bad shape I mean it's it's rough all the way around I don't know if it was left outside or a part set or what it was but usually the ones of these I work on are damn near new old stock so this will be an adventure I tested the CRT already it's weak um, I'm sure that's going to reflect in a very bad picture but let's see if we could get it to work the first thing I'm going to do is open it inspect the flyback bracket to see if that's broken I think this is about a 1975 Sony Trinitron anyway if you should be so lucky as to find one of these do not just plug it in and turn the power on do not bring it up on a variac take it apart and inspect inspect so where is the flyback or high voltage generating transformer this is a high mileage set right here this thing is Okay, the transformer we want's down in there, so I got to get access to that uh, so I can inspect the bolts that hold the bracket, hold the core together. Okay, here we go. It's these bolts right here. Make sure these are. Well, they look like they're together. It's these that hold the core of the transformer together. Now this had a note on the front of it, uh, a piece of tape, and it was removed. I think this is the other, either that or, well, this thing's got weeds in it, or this. It's filthy. So I'm going to double check this flyback. Now this is something I've just learned. What size is this? This is a 5.5 millimeter. This is something I've learned by working on so many of these and just seeing pattern problems that these this U-bolt breaks and it fries everything. Yeah? Yeah, it seems good. Seems good. Let's check the fuses next. That one is good. We'll check this one here. That one is good. Okay. Checking some of these puketastic capacitors with the conductive glue under them. They're getting tired. And this looks like a replacement part. SG608. Looks like that's been replaced. So these are getting tired. Okay, checking a bunch of these capacitors over here, these electrolytics, they're tired. I could bring it up on a Variac and start at 90 volts, but I'm just going to go full bore here. Ooh, no vertical. Man, is that dim. So all we have is a vertical line here. Um, and the brightness is all the way down. Notice how it blooms as I turn it up. That's probably a weak CRT, but yeah, I do have the brightness all the way down. So our vertical is right here, it's these two transistors and then a bunch of stuff over here. Let's get straight into it. This is a little bit different of a schematic. This is for a 1712, but I believe this uses the same board right here. So we have an IC that's our vertical oscillator, so we have the signal coming out of here into the vertical size. 
we have a coupling capacitor there um, vertical amp vertical drive and then push pull vertical output that's what these are right here um, I've dealt with these before where this capacitor goes open and causes these transistors to fail someone's definitely been in here before look at the soldering on that capacitor 520 and then look at the soldering on the the transistor it's like this board is so crappy soldered but anyway let's um i don't believe these have a a normal service switch this is probably the ic right here where the signal comes from so let's see, it comes Q501. Let's just start doing some DC voltage checks. So the collector of 503 is should be 119, 503, collector, got 121 there. The emitter should be 70 volts. Measuring 72.9. Really? So what's the emitter of uh, 504? 504 emitter. Half a volt. And they say it should be... So why is there no deflection? For those voltages to be that close, I would think I would think it would have a signal going through it. Okay, let's look at the driver, the base of the driver. It's 3.8. It should be 3.6. The emitter should be 3.54 emitter. Why are these voltages so close? 3.2. What the hell? Base of the amp is. I don't think that's the right place. Base 8 volts. I'm not on the right place. Stand by, let me figure this out. This is the transistor base collector emitter. The base is 0.7 and they say 0.6. The collector is 0.1 and they want uh, 9.45 over here. Ooh. We have smoke. Okay. Living in the age of smoke. And I just think I figured out what was wrong. So which one of these capacitors clinky twinklerated? Ooh, that sucker's hot. Uh, what I discovered is an open resistor here. What I had just discovered prior to that capacitor venting was that we had no 9 volts on the collector, and we had 132 volts here and nothing here, so this I'm suspecting this resistor of being open. And uh, that's when the capacitor let loose. Now let's see, what capacitor is that? That is 543. So yeah, I think we have a, this resistor's open right here. Which is a fusible resistor. Why wow, that glue looks bad. Someone recapped a bunch of this over here. At 47K, I have one side of it lifted out of circuit. 
it's measuring okay it's measuring 48 K um, so is the transistor shorted I do not have a 4.7 at 350 right now all I have is a 22 at 400 I'm gonna have to make this work with these short leads I'll have to put some leads on it getting ready to install this one uh, it looks like this one's blown apart too I could swear that one's broken and blown up. It is blowed up. Look at this one. It was already blowed up when I turned it on. This one didn't go off on me. This other one did. This was a 33 microfarad at 160 volt. This was a 4.7 microfarad at 350 volt. They're both 22 microfarad at 400 volt now because that's what I have and you know what you can't lose with 22s. All right, let's power it back up Wouldn't that be funny if that fixed the vertical I doubt it would but you never know with a blowed couple blowed up capacitors Did it fix it? It did fix it. What the hell? Boy, that is a weak CRT. Here I am tracing, tracing the oscillator and we have a blowed up capacitor. I gotta see what that capacitor... We don't have good linearity though, it's... And we don't have good focus. We don't really have good anything. This schematic is different. It does not show those capacitors that I replaced. So I don't know what they're for. Interesting. Um, they fixed it, whatever they're for. And it had to be this one because the other one blew up. And you can see this one blew up a long time ago. See how dry it is? So this, this had to be the one that was killing the vertical, unless it was a bad solder joint there and I fixed it when I removed the resistor to test it. Wow, so it's got bad linearity, it's got the pin cushion issue. Look at the pin cushion. Uh, bad linearity, I, I think I can straighten that out. Let me try and dial the linearity in. Wow, the color smearing is so bad. Look at, look at how bad the color smearing is because the CRT is weak. This pot's got to be cleaned too. Man, the color smearing, it just horrible. Really weak CRT. Yeah, we've got to have an open capacitor in the pincushion circuit. Let me check that. I'm just going through with the capacitor wizard and I pulled the board loose. I'm just testing every capacitor. This one's good. There's one right here that's open. We'll change that one. Well, it's not open. It's about 50 ohms. Okay, here's another one that's totally dead. This thing needs a full recap. If the CRT was in good shape and the thing was in good shape, I'd be all over it, but it's not. So look at this awesomeness. And this capacitor's dead. Look at, the, look at that. And it actually shows that right there. It actually shows the capacitor and resistor symbol on the bottom of the board here. Let me clean it off. There you go. You can see it better now. That is this. And this capacitor is completely dead. Okay. This was supposed to be a, we're going to play supposed to be, a 1 microfarad at 160 volt in here, and it's a 1 microfarad at 250 volt now. This one right here is supposed to be a 4.7 at 100 microfarad. It is now a 10 microfarad at 250 volt, so I 
over doubled the size of that one. I hope that doesn't matter. This one here with the resistor soldered to it, I got the stupid resistor on the wrong side. That was a 16 at 100, it's now a, a 25 volt at 100. So I checked all the rest of them. Like I said, this was supposed to be a 33 at 160, it's now a 22 at 400. This was supposed to be a 4.7 at 350, it's now a 22 at 400. So I've really screwed with these values. I'm pretty sure either this one or this one was the fault of the pin cushion. I don't know what this one does, but it was totally open. The rest of them are okay. This one's pretty faded at uh, 7 ohms. That's real bad for a 330. Let me see if I can find a 330. Okay, this is a... Uh, I, it was on the other side. I put it back on. It's completely open. It's a 10 microfarad bipolar. And I don't have any of those. I'm tr I think if I could find 222s and tie the negatives together. Um, I found a 4.7 that was open, changed it. Uh, here's what I came up with. All I could find was 10 microfarad. So these things are like plus or minus 30% or whatever anyway. So it's 100% off, big deal. It was working without it completely. So what I did is I did two tens with the negatives tied together. So this should be uh, five microfarads at 100 volts bipolar, right? I think I got that right. Man, this thing is just filled with open capacitors. What I've been doing is just pulling good used caps off these boards. Because like I said, this, this set has a really weak CRT. So, why bother? Okay, here goes. It's always a little creepy turning it on after. Wow, that corrected the pin cushion. Where's our red bars? Did that correct the color smearing? Let's see. No. No, the color just, the CRT is just garbage. And red, red is real weak. You can see red takes forever to come up. Yeah, it'll produce a picture. Look at it, it's kind of wavy. Probably more bad capacitors. It's, it's wavy. It's not good. i clean this. See, there was a strip of tape here that probably said, you know, no vertical. This is seriously the most baked out Trinitron I think I've worked on. Uh, it started out with no vertical, just a line. While trying to diagnose that while probing for voltages, this capacitor let loose and, and vented. Um, just, it was probably trying to reform and it, it blew up. Uh, when I was changing this one, I noticed that this one was just hanging there. I replaced these two, it got the vertical working. Then the pin cushion was jacked up. So I found two more that were bad and I went through and checked the rest of them. And all of these capacitors here are completely bad. I mean, they're not, they're, they're dead. And yeah, it was working with just these two replaced, but all of these are just open. Uh, I got it adjusted pretty good now. It is definitely got a bad CRT. It is not going to have a good picture. Um, we'll take a look at it later. You can see the bleeding there. You know, this, this, this should not bleed. This should be a nice clean red bar. You can see that obviously the red is the weakest and the green is the strongest because the green doesn't bleed at all. See, see how green doesn't bleed? See how blue bleeds? That, that's weak CRT. So I mean it'll have a usable picture I guess with the color turned almost all the way down. That was just recapping going over this one board, the deflection board. The volume is weak. 
I mean, that should be blaring loud. I got a feeling there's more open capacitors over here. I think to round this video out, I need to pull that schematic out and we need to take a look at what these two capacitors were for. Why this one affected the vertical, killed the vertical. But anyway, we'll take a look at it tonight with the converter box. But I don't think it's going to be very impressive. And I need to very clearly add, you do not rejuvenate or restore or try and do anything to a Trinitron CRT with a picture tube restorer, tester, rejuvenator. You don't do that to these CRTs. It kills them. Never try and rejuvenate a Trinitron tube. 1974, KV-1722. All right, look at that beauty right there. Ooh, boy. Look, let's, let's see what was, what was competing. Ooh, quality. Uh, let's see what those capacitors were. Okay, here's the first one right here, C543, the 4.7 microfarad. Uh, that comes off the high voltage or the horizontal transformer through a diode. It's just a 200 volt source. So that one's been replaced with a 22, 543, and the other one was 540, 548 was the one I think that was stopping the vertical. This bigger one, the 33, is just a power supply rail filter right there, 548. This is an interesting regulation strategy for the power supply in this set. This is just the off the line, uh, off the line regulation. It it's almost looks like it's a pulse width modulated type um, regulation. It uses a chopper pre driver, a chopper that drives into a trans transformer, and then it uses a switching. SCR or triac or whatever that thing is called. So what, what this is almost like early PWM. Now the whole thing is in one chip. I wonder if any of these capacitors are bad. It's probably a stupid question. This this board in the back here should probably totally be recapped also even more so because if these capacitors in the switching regulation circuit go bad they probably cause the regulation to go haywire I really don't see anything here that would have caused this collector voltage to be low or be nothing uh, except for that 47k resistor because I had 130 volts on one side of it and zero on the other so I'm thinking that when I soldered to that thing to test it, desoldered it, it was either a bad solder joint or I heated that resistor up and caused it to start working again, in which case it will fail again. Okay, let's take a look at our Trinitron here. Actually, the picture is better than I thought it would be. Um... You can see the bleeding there. Look at the reds. And the sound is all the way up, so we got open capacitors in the sound circuit. I'll turn the color off. It's a bluish picture. The See the, the red bleed here? Look at the red bleed side of the lamp the red bleed yep definitely bad capacitors in the audio 
see the bleed see the red look at the red bleed look at the red bleed there You can see as I crank the brightness up, see the red bleed there. Look at that. So as long as you keep the the picture down. Yeah, it's bad. God, this might be copyright. <laughs> Hold on. It is totally usable if you keep the brightness down. But if you can crank it up, anytime you get red, it just blows out. Try and get in a little closer on that. There you go. Look at the look at the red bleed on the numbers. Yeah, there ain't no fix in that. Yeah, if you turn it all the way down, it looks good, but that's very, very dark. I know the AGC and the camera corrects for it. God, look at it right here. Smear-tastic. Okay, let's take a look at some commercials here. Because commercials seem to give you a little bit more variety. It's not bad. We've got some noise here. I'm not worried about that. That's something, something interfering here. I'll have to figure out what capacitor in the audio is open. There might also be a slight regulation problem too, because I noticed the the picture size bounces, and it shouldn't do that. If you watch it, See how that bounced? Probably bad capacitors on that regulation board. Usable.
it's actually really bright. All right, I'm done. I think we're good here. Talk about polishing a turd. Hey, looking at the sound on the Sony, we've got a couple couple electrolytics in this circuit. Not a lot. I think the one I'm most interested in is this right here, a C248. It's like a feedback uh, in the chip. I think that's the one that controls the gain. See, I got kind of a horrible shadow here. Uh, that capacitor right there. So there's a few other ones here. So I want to check that capacitor. The feedback cap right there, I don't think that'll be a problem. Because um, we have like no, no volume at all. See, I'm really looking at that one microfarad right there. Uh, what's good is the audio I see appears to be right here, not behind a metal can. So that's that's a good thing. And that is what they show. Uh, right, where is it here? I just had it. Right there. Let me check that capacitor. So here's the audio chip right here. And this capacitor, which I believe is that little feedback capacitor, most of these chips have a capacitor that goes between two of the leads that sets the gain. Uh, this capacitor is wide open and this capacitor is wide open. This one's okay. And these down here are okay. I checked a bunch of the other ones. And they're okay. But yeah, this thing... Yeah. This is the most capacitor hungry set I think I've ever worked on. So I'll change these two. And then these coils here are... These adjustments would probably get rid of your buzz. But first we need to get these capacitors. Here are the two capacitors I pulled out, a 1 microfarad 350 volt and a 0.47 or half microfarad at 50 volt. You can see how the 1 microfarad's leaked out there. I didn't have a 1 microfarad 350 volt, so I ended up putting a, a film cap in here. Just tacked it on the bottom for now. And it's a 105, which is 1 microfarad at 400 volts. So here's the test. Let's see what happens. I'll say that fixed it. Wow. That's like super loud now. So I, I think we got a... A pretty good fix on this uh, capacitor needing Sony. Baked. Baked. I'll have to order some of these values the next time I place an order with DigiKey. Order like 10 of each.